Yo, what it do game? Welcome back to the channel. So listen, you guys have been asking me to make a combo guide on the new Gotti deck. So I've been doing a bunch of testing and um, I came up with this specific deck list right here that I really enjoy. I'm actually, this is my World Championship 2023 qualifiers deck and I freaking love this thing. I went, I went on a freaking seven game win streak against top tier decks, bro. So essentially, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna break down everything. I'm gonna show you the combo guys, but I'm, the way I'm gonna show you the combo guys is going to be by showing you replays. So that way, I'm not just showing you the combo, I'm showing you what you could do on the turn that you set up your combo, which I think is better. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please leave a like, share, comment, and consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. It would mean a lot to me if we actually make that happen. So please consider subscribing. With that being said, let's let's get into the combos <laughs> all right guys so this is not like a combo type of thing it's, it's just okay so i'm gonna show you that this deck can play on turn zero this deck can actually make crazy disruptions on turn zero so that's why i'm gonna show you this replay against runic that um i'm also gonna put timestamps i don't want the video to be too long but i think it's going to be a little long because i'm gonna show you so many things and so many things that you should know about this deck so with that being said, I'm going to put timestamps. The video might be a little long. I'm sorry. So here, again, we're going to play against Runic. None of this matters. They're just going to do this thing, sending a bunch of, um, you know, spells to the graveyard, which is fine by us. I don't know why people play this version of this deck. I don't like it, bro. It's, it's essentially just getting rid of a bunch of stuff. I mean, it works sometimes, right? So here, again, none of this matters. That's not why we're here. We're here for the main reason that I run this at 3. This is the reason why I run this at three and this at three because when you open up with these on your on your and you're going second, you have two disruptions which I'm gonna show you right. So now they're gonna get the runic fountain and this is what I'm talking about. You're going to activate your snopios. You're going to send specifically the Seth and any other fish monster whether it's in the graveyard or in the in the in the hand right. Send those. Activate this thing now. You can uh, um, target one card on the field and next time that card leaves the field, it's banished instead right. And then you're going to activate your staff, bring it onto the field, activate its effect. And here what you could do is, let's say if your opponent had a bunch of attack monsters on the field, you can go into your Aurora Whale, where's it at? This thing, and destroy everything on turn zero. Now, if you if you don't want to do that, you could also go into your other level A, your Ascan, and now you can banish a card on the field. So we specifically went for the Runic Fountain, get that thing out of here. And they scoop, right? So this deck can actually play on <laughs> turn zero, bro, which is crazy. Now let's go into the next step. All right, guys. So here we are for this replay where I'm going to show you a little different combo and things that you could do with this deck that are kind of a little bit weird. Um, if I sound a little weird, also I'm a little congested, bro, just to let you know. So here we're going to start off our combo. By, this is your super combo, right? You're going to activate this thing's effect. You're going to get rid of a, a, any card in your hand, special summon it. You're going to so get yourself a super. Then, um, this is not a part of the combo. This is just a card that I'm playing in the deck for specific reasons. But this thing is a target. If you if you activate its effect, you could basically send a water monster. If you hit it, a water monster here and then special summon that thing. We can allow you to go into a level 8 to, um, synchro summon. But either way, we're going to use both of these right here to go into your Ariompos. Ariompos activate its effect. You're going to send the paces to the um, banish zone. Where well, you're going to banish the paces. And here, you can use Crossout Designator as a combo starter as well, which is crazy. This is basically a, a um, what's it called? Esophagus? A sarcophagus? The other card that does like a tomb. This is basically that for this there because you can activate it. Send yourself specifically the shift now that you send the paces and you're going to end your turn, right? So here we're going to let our opponent and look, the thing that you send with your crossout designator comes back, which is crazy to me. And then your paces also comes back during your turn. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you, the fact that you could use crossout designator. So here, for example, our opponent is going to do things. I'm going to activate the, um, our shift, right? You're going to use both of these monsters. You basically have, when you have this type of board, you have two banishes. You have a banish one card on the field and banish everything. This is what I mean. Right now, when you use this specific combo with the shift, you can bring your Ascan. Ascan is going to activate this thing effect. Um, then you're going to activate the effect of the Arionpost, right? And now if you have this in the hand, 
make sure that if you have this in the hand you bring back this to the hand with the effect of your Arion pose. You know how you could banish a card, grab a card to your hand, make sure you grab this one if you have this one. Again for the same specific reason, you see how we banish everything right here? You're gonna send, you're gonna banish your Arion pose, bring this thing back, right? It's your level 8, level 2, you have a level 10. So you know you're going to let your opponent do things, so yeah I'm going to go into our um, Gaudi of the Deep, right? I'm going to activate its effect. Now, I don't really know how uh, Pendulum works, but essentially, I activated its effect, right? But you still have another disruption. You still have your physical Raigeki. This is what I mean, right? So, they're going to continue doing things. Yada, yada, yada. Starters Pendulum. I honestly don't know what they do. Now, here, for example, two monsters that are in, a, in attack position. You have your third disruption. You're going to activate your um, Snopios. Make sure that you send the Seth to the... Um, Banish the Seth and any other monster. We banish the Paces because it comes back next turn, right? Then you're gonna normal summon that. We'll special summon it. And now any one of these, next time it gets destroyed, it'll be banished instead, right? So specifically this one, then you're going to activate your Seth. It's gonna come back onto the field. Activate its effect. And you're going to go into your White Aurora Whale. A.K.A. Physical Raigeki. Look at this. Pop everything. That's in attack position. And the one that we targeted, it gets banished instead. So that is crazy. Those are three disruptions. That's why I wanted to show you the specific replay. They're going to continue doing things, but honestly, it didn't even matter, right? So just with just that one replay, I just showed you about four or five different things that you could do with this deck. And the ultimate combo that when you end up with your two tuners, your um, shift and your paces and a level six, and then if you have your Snopios in the hand, you have three disruptions. You have a banish one card, banish everything, and your physical Raigeki, which is amazing, right? With that being said, let's go into the, um, let me see. Let's go into the next replay, or deck list. I don't know how I'm going to do the order of the video, so I'll let you guys know. Alright guys, so I decided to show you guys this specific replay, just to show you, even though I don't really play both of them right now, it's just in case on whether you want to play them, I'm going to show you how these two are actually really good for the deck, right? So here for example, we get Maxi, we don't really care, also I'm going to show you why you could also play Hop Ear Squadron in this deck, which is really good, right? So again, we're going to banish this thing, I'm going to special summon this thing, and I'm going to set down my two traps and end our turn, right? I don't remember what we're playing against. Maybe Runic again. I'm not sure. So, yeah, we're playing against Runic. So, again, they're going to do Runic stuff. Here, I'm going to activate the paces, right? Using both of these so I could go into my Asken. Again, I'm going to activate the effect of our Asken right here. Targeting this thing. And here, they activate the Runic Flash Fire, which would have targeted this thing right here and destroyed it. So, this is how you could use this, um, this card to basically avoid certain, certain um, effects, right? So right here, you're going to activate this thing's effect, banish that monster. And then you could bring out any one of your monsters from the deck onto the field, which is amazing. Usually, if you don't have your Arion pose, that's what I would do. And then I would tiger a card on the field and make sure it gets banished when he leaves the field, right? So here, you guys saw us dodge that thing. Again, we, now we could activate our Askan, banish one of our monsters, and bring it back. And here, they're going to do um, Notorious stuff. I'm going to activate our second um, Gaudi Fury. Well, our first Gaudi Fury, just our second trap, right? And I'm going to banish both of these monsters for right for until the end of next turn because if I don't, they're going to have inf infinite negates, right? And here, you can activate your um, Hop Ear Squadron, which is why I'm telling you this thing is amazing in this deck as well. You're going to special summon it, a level 2 tuner, level 8. You could just synchro summon on your opponent's turn into a Baron de Floor. And of course, your opponent is going to scoop after that. If I'm talking a little fast, bro, it's because I don't want the video to be too long. And I want to go over a lot of things that you guys should know. So with that being said, um, let's go into the next replay. Alright, guys. So here we are for the um, basically ultimate combo that you could do with this deck to end up on a really good turn one board. By the way, big shout out to Ace Yu-Gi-Oh. This is um, he's the one that I learned this from. But the thing this the thing is is that my deck is different and I start the combo different. So essentially, you're going to start off this combo by activating your pace. You're going to activate its effect, right? And then you're going to make sure that you this this is a two-car combo. You need this thing. Well, it's technically a three-car combo. But either way, make sure that you get your deep seeking, right? Special summon that thing. You are going to activate its effect. 
we're going to send um doesn't really matter we'll just send this for now and then what you what you'll want to do is make sure you get a level one tuner a level two tuner doesn't really matter which one a level four regular monster and a level three tuner right summon them onto the field right there now you can't really activate any of the effects they're all negated and they can't attack they're just bodies so you can start doing your combo right so right here what you'll do is you could go into um any level 10 that you like i don't let's go for the um Cheng Ying. right set him down right there So from here now you could definitely activate this effect just to give the monster that you made an attack boost, right? Really good. So um, from here now you'll make your level six. Doesn't really matter where you set him down, but you know just make sure you set him down, right? Activate this effect. You are going to banish. Um, I would say preferably this, right? Activate this effect. You're going to do not banish um this or this. Do not banish any one of these two because you're gonna need them. So right here, I guess I'll just banish um this one. Bring this back to the hand. From here, you'll um we don't need to do that yet. You'll activate well your synchro summon into this. Right here, your level seven. Set him down right here. So from here now you're going to activate both of these effects right here. Um you're with this effect you're going to target to bring back the deep seeking. And then with this effect you are going to um banish let me see uh lifeless leaf fish. Do not activate this yet. You're going to get yourself Where's it at? It doesn't really matter. You just basically need a body to get rid of. So, essentially, I'll just grab this one for now. So, again, this is going to come back onto the field. Now, um, I'm going to activate the effect of the Fishborg Launcher, right? It's going to special summon itself onto the field. And now here you can make yourself any level 8, well, out of these right here. So prefer to be probably your um, Risen Dragite, right? Using both of these monsters right here. Set that down. Then what you'll do from here is activate the Deep Sea King um, effect. So right here, since I don't have the Leaf Fish in there, I'm going to send the Leaf Fish. And then we are going to summon one, two, and basically any level two tuner that you want out of these right here. So I'm going to go with this one. So basically, this is just your free level. Oh, I, I thought I messed up <laughs> your free level 10 right here. So you can make Baron the floor. We'll just go for the um, Gamir right now for the just to show you. But any level 10 that you want to make, this is your free level 10 right here. Set that down. Um, from here, you're going to, um, if you want, you could activate one of your lifeless leaf fish, right? And you could bring uh, these back into your deck. I probably want to put the level three tuner back in there, or do I, I just have this for just just in case we draw into it? It's technically a starter, right? So that is your board. That is your ultimate turn one board. You got two level 10 monsters, which one of these could have been Baron the Flow, whatever you would have wanted. One level eight um, spell negate this thing. If if they uh, do anything that targets it, you could just um, get rid of one of your fish monsters and negate the effect and destroy. Right here, we could actually make another play. We could actually make our super play. Um, what I recommend is leaving this in your hand and leaving this in the graveyard if you did your combo by sending this, and I'm gonna show you why, right? So the reason why you should have this and that thing in there is because um, I'm not even going to bring these back right now. I just want to show you this specific um, little thing, right? Which is essentially the way that you can make a free level 8 with this, right? You're going to activate this effect. 
like I showed you earlier, just make sure that you banish this thing. The other one doesn't really matter. Let's just banish this. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really matter. This thing is going to special summon itself. So besides all of this that you've already had, you also had a level two, a level eight banish. Because now you can get to activate this. I'm not even going to activate this effect. I just want to show you. And now with this thing, you're going to activate its effect. And basically you have your level, well... Right now, you could, since you have a level 8, you could go into your level 10, banish everything. But this is either a free right Geki if there, if there are attack position monsters on the field. Or you get yourself a banish right here. You guys know how this works. I showed it to you. But this is legitimately the ultimate board. Again, shout out to um, Ace Yu-Gi-Oh. He's the one that I kind of learned this from. I just start the combo differently. And uh, my deck is a little different. But shout out to him or her. I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, it doesn't really matter which one you banish, who cares, blah, blah. Again, it was for the sake of just showing you that you also had that. Even though, it's just in case they actually destroy some of your monsters because you're going to need this space because eventually you would have brought back your two tuners to also do plays, right? So with that being said, let's go into the deck list. Alright guys, so here we are for the um, deck list portion of the video. So essentially the reason why I'm playing the deck the way I'm playing it, I'm going to go over the deck list, right? But the way I'm the reason why I'm playing this deck this way is because it's the best, most consistent, and most fun way and yet competitive way to play this deck, in my opinion. At least for me, this deck works amazingly. Now you're probably thinking, brother, where is the soup A package? I have different versions of this deck, right? I have this one right now, and then I have this other one right here, right? So essentially, this one I'm gonna tell you about this. This card right here, if you want to add it into your sauciness, you can add this thing here because when you banish a monster, you this is basically a free level eight. This is a free level eight 3000 B stick that you could use to go into your level tens with your level two tuners on your opponent's turn. Also, if you're playing against let's say um tier limits and they have their uh, field spell on the field spell zone. And they have a card on the on the graveyard. You could act. You could basically, if you banish a monster, you could activate this effect, bring it from your graveyard or the hand onto the field, and you get to banish their field spell and a card in the graveyard, which is really good. If not, then you just have a three hundred, a three hundred. You have a three thousand B level A B stick that can be used as a few um, material to synchro summon. That's why that's in here. Um, anything else that I added? That's like okay. Never mind. No. All right, so let's go back to my deck list now. In that other package, we were playing the Supe package. In this one, we're not. The reason why is because I have a love and hate relationship with the Supe package. Now, what I mean by that is that the Supe package, they're not wa water or fish monsters. So essentially, sometimes when I have this thing in the hand and I have this thing in the hand, I, I get stuck wishing that I had a water monster, but instead of water monsters, I have the two Supes in the graveyard, so I can't activate that effect. It actually cost me a few games. Now, with that being said, that's the reason why I'm running three anglers. Now, the reason why I'm running three anglers is because I can normal summon any one of my level twos. I can special summon the angler, and that's how I'm going to go into my level six. That's how I like to do it, bro. I, I prefer it that way because now I have fish monsters in the graveyard to banish when I activate some of my effects, like this effect, when it gets used as a synchro material, banish a car or a fish monster from the graveyard, right? It gives you more materials in the graveyard to banish, which is better than the super package. So that's why I don't run the super package in this specific deck. Um, also, we are running a, let me just go over the whole deck list now that I explained those things. So we do run one fish board launcher. This is for your ultimate combo with this thing. Basically, you need the level one tuner that can special summon itself. Then you have three beautiful um, princesses. Um, really good because, again, it banishes itself. It's a good starter because you have a monster banished. So when you go into this thing, it's basically free 500 attack, right? But um, also it gives this thing an attack boost, this thing. But the only sad thing about this is that it, it's your starter, but it, it, it's so prone to Ash. Ash will body that thing, like, immediately, <laughs> which is sad. So... But we still run it at 3 because it's your starter, right? You're going to activate that thing, special summon this thing, send uh, this to the graveyard, activate its effect, give this an attack boost, and on your next turn, you're going to go into your level 6 and do your combos. Then we run 2 maxi for maxi purposes, right? 1 fish planner. Um, I like this thing because when you get rid of a monster, like even with this effect or a card, you can send this thing to the graveyard, activate its effect, and essentially if you send one of your water monsters to the graveyard, you can special summon it. It's a free level 2. It can allow you to go into different combos. Um, then you have 3 paces. Definitely run this at 3. This thing is your um, 1 card combo with this thing in the hand. 
to go into your big board that I showed you, right? Um, that's why we run it at three. It's your best starter. Also, I love that card. Then you run shift at two. You don't need to run shift at more than two because essentially she's going to be or it is going to be hopping in and out from the graveyard into the banish zone to your to the field. You know, depending on how you're playing the game, this thing is always in rotation. That's why some people play it at one. I'd rather play it at two. Um, then the Seth. A lot of people might think I'm crazy. They're like, dude, why are you running that thing at, th at three? I don't know what the qualifications are for tier 0 decks, but this is technically a tier 0 deck because it can play on turn 0. With this thing and this thing and another fish monster, you're basically, like I said, you have your physical regeki or you have a banish a card on your opponent's first turn. And on top of that, if you banish, uh, let's say you activate this effect, banish this and this, now you have your combo starter in your second turn by this thing coming back, which is amazing. So that's why we run that at 3. Ash Blossom to 2. Um, one glutinous raw reptofen again level three tutor you need this for your um, crazy combo right then three silent anglers again the reason why i'm running this at three is because i'm using it essentially as a starter i'm going to special summon or normal summon one of my level twos tuners normal summon this thing oh, i mean special summon it from the hand and go into my combo because i'd rather do that than go into the super package right one nemesis corridor because we have banished monsters. This thing, I love it. So basically, you're gonna grab one of your banished monsters, send it to the deck, special summon this, special summon this thing. Now they can't add hand, um, cards from the deck to the hand, right? Then we run three life of these fish because this is your one card combo as well. Anybody that tells you this deck doesn't have a one card combo, I don't know what the heck we're talking about, brothers. If you normal summon this thing and send this thing to the graveyard, activate this thing's effect, that's your one card combo. Because this deck, you're, you're not making a crazy board, a specific, well, with the combo I showed you, yeah. But with this deck, you're not making a specific board. You're making a setup so you can disrupt your opponent on their turn, which is why I love playing this deck. <laughs> then we run one Icev Omen of the Gotti. Honestly, you could take this out. It's just, I like the fact that it's a level 4 that can special summon itself on the field, right? Also, it's a Gotti card. Then we have three Snopios for the same reason, like I said, this thing with this thing, you're playing on your opponent's turn, you could make some great disruptions. Then we run two Deep Sea Kings, again for the ultimate combo that I showed you, um, Harpy's Feather Duster to one because we don't have a lot of back row removal, honestly, back row is bad for us. Then two Kobai the Graves, one Cross Out Designated, two Evenly Matched, two Infinite Impermanence, and one Gaudy Fury. I'm not running the other one because I wanted to keep the deck at 40. And the way I'm playing the deck, this is better for me. It's kind of a disruption, but also, I I just like it better than the other one. And I like this specific number of cards in this deck. Then for extra deck, we do run one Thunder Dragon Colossus. Again, for the Nemesis package. Two Ariampos, the Serpent. This is your... You can't play this deck without this. Um, one White Aurora Macros. This is for your specific combo that you're going to do with this thing. One Crystal Ring Synchro Dragon. You could basically... um change this for any other level 8 that you would like to put in the deck if you don't want to have this one but i like it so one one white aurora whale aka physical raigeki i showed you how you could use this sim to disrupt your opponent on their first turn as well which is crazy um also make sure a hundred percent please make sure that this is link one if this is link two or higher or anything like that you're you're gonna miss the timing for this this always has to be link one like when you're chaining, chain one, link one, whatever you want to call it, this has to be number one, bro. If not, you just basically summon a level A body to the field that does nothing. One, an Emancipated Rising Dragai, again, level A, water. Um, one, Asso Synchro Stardust. This is how you're going to go. You're going to go into, you're going to make this level A, and this is how you're going to go into non-water tuners like your, um, well, this is water, but essentially like your chain game, but on the floor and whatever, stuff like that, right? Then um, you have your two Askins. Again, it's the Russian. Banish a card on the field. Bring it back. You guys know how that works. Um, Baron the Floor. Source of Supreme Severin Chenji. Two Goddies of the Deep. You could run this at one. I like to run it at two because sometimes this they'll negate this and now you don't have that. So if they negate it, I have the second one in the back pocket hot and ready to hit him again with it, right? IJ Grimoire. I love playing this card in this deck. This thing is some crack. Your opponent activates some shenanigans that's about to blow up your board. Activate this thing and banish a card. Like, what are you doing, bro? This thing is crazy. So, with that being said, that is the whole thing. There's a lot of different cards that you could play in this deck. What I suggest doing is, when you're playing the game, go here, right? Go into water. Go into fish. 
or um, sea serpent and then just hit OK. It's going to give you a whole list of all these water sea serpent tuners, non tuners. This is how I was building the deck. I sat here and I, for a few days and I was just reading a bunch of these cards. And that's how I came up with this combination right here. So I suggest doing that because you can make a lot of saucy. You can make your this deck plays in so many different ways. It's like Black Wings, bro. Like it plays in so many different ways, which is I love this deck. I love this archetype. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to see all the other things, go check out Yu-Gi-Oh! Ace or um Deep Sea King. They have really good um decks for this. Mine is just a little different. You guys should give this a try. It's honestly really good. I went on a seven win streak. I, I just went from level zero to level 14 in the in the championship 2023 qualifier just with this deck alone. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Enough talking. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.